Hi, welcome to this class. Today we'll focus on shoulder mobility. So you may have tight shoulders, you may have an injury, you may be just holding and not know the correct actions to get that opening. So we'll focus on several different things that you can do today to begin to strengthen, to be able to get that stretchability, to have the needed support you need muscularly, and just to have the awareness of how to get a better action from your shoulders so in day-to-day -day life you will be able to support yourself and making sure you're not going to injure yourself. All right, so let's get started. Before we get started, if you want to learn the basics of Iyengar Yoga, I've designed a new course, Foundational Iyengar Yoga. This course is for you if you're a beginner, if you've been practicing for a while and you just want to deepen your understanding, or if you're a teacher and you would like to be more inspired, go back to the basics. So it's a six week course, 18 different classes, and you'll be able to go through at your own pace. You can find more details in the description box below. All right, we're first starting with the pose forward virasana. And I'm sitting on a block, so I'll take this block out now and I'm gonna use this block for my head. So you sit back on your heels and then spread the knees apart, the thighs apart, not too far, so not like this and not too close like this, but have the thighs parallel to one another or a little off parallel. And when I go forward, I wanna feel the, the trunk. So you're gonna use a block or some sort of support. You could even use blankets. I'm gonna bring the side of my head onto that block. So here, I'm getting a twisting action, so I'm turning from the side. I wanna keep this hip down, and I'm bringing my arm under. So first, bring your forearm onto the floor, anchor your hips back, stretch your toes back, your feet down, and then start to walk that arm over. And then you can place the block however you need to place it so that you can rest the head while you stay in this position. Okay, so moving the shoulder, moving the whole back body, the shoulder girdle, use the other hand to press down into the floor and move that right hip back. So just breathe, exhale, turn. So you're turning from the whole back shoulder, turning, opening through the chest. Stay there for a few breaths. that's too far down for you, you can always raise the block up or have a blanket or have something so that you can stay there for at least, you know, like 10 breaths. And then you'll come up, move to the other side. So again, anchoring your hips back. So when we're turning to one side, we wanna get that extension and lengthening and turning by grounding that hip. So you're coming down, lifting up, turning the abdomen, and then bringing that forearm on the floor and move the shoulder forward. And then adjust your block. Bring your head down onto the block. Anchor your hip back. And use the other hand on the floor to press and turn. So I'm cutting that left shoulder under and I'm stretching all the muscles right at the top of the shoulder, shoulder blade, as well as lengthening. The head is completely relaxed and neutral. And then release, come up, okay. So here you're getting that movement of the shoulder moving this way, essentially is the direction it was moving. Okay, so now you're going to get a chair. So we'll go into Barvajasana. So when you were talking about our shoulders, we want to bring mobility to the shoulders. I'm going to use a strap. So you can take a strap. You can take any kind of strap and to put it on, I'm gonna put it on as a shoulder harness. So I'm just taking my hands through 
like I'm putting a jacket on, one side and then the other side. Okay, that's right at the top of my shoulders. And then I'm just reaching around behind me, and I'm gonna take that and put it underneath the loop, and then pull it so that I'm gonna have it around the shoulders, and the other, the sides are hanging down. So from here, just adjust it on the shoulders. So I want, this is the armpit chest. So the armpit chest is lifting up, shoulders are descending. Oftentimes, when you don't have that mobility in your shoulders, your shoulders are lifting up, you're on a device, you don't even realize it. You're getting tension right in the shoulders. So take your hands, walk your hands up, keep your elbows bent, turning so that you're dropping, dropping the shoulder blades and keep the elbows moving towards one another. Okay, so it, it increases your ability to have that openness through the neck and the shoulders. All right, so now you're going to come into the chair. So I'm stepping into the chair. You can also move the chair forward and step in one foot at a time. All right, so from here, I'm going to shorten that strap a little bit or just make it the right distance and I'm sitting on that strap. So sitting on the strap, it helps to keep that extension so the shoulders are moving down. I no longer have to hold it. If your strap is too short, then you can cinch two straps together and create the same effect. So just you buckle the straps together. So I'm bringing it underneath the thighs and then just bring the hands to the front of the chair. Okay, so here, this is the direction. When we're sitting, we're often sinking. Abdomen is sinking. This front armpit chest is moving down. So here you have the imprint of the way you need to be. So we're gonna do a twist now. So you bring your hand onto the front of the chair, bring your other hand back. Now when I bring this arm up, you know, the tendency could be to lift that shoulder. So st if you're long-armed, just bring your hand down a little bit further. So you want to go with the direction of where that strap is guiding you. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, turn. Squeeze your thighs together. Have your inner feet together. Inhale, lift. Exhale, turn. Roll that shoulder back. So the direction that that strap is providing is moving the shoulder blades down, moving the tops of the shoulders down. So using that, your inhalation and your exhalation, turn. Okay, so I'm coming from here and then come back to the center. Take the arm over again, press the arm down and lift up through the chest. So this is providing the direction, the strap, shoulder blades moving down, but the chest is also lifting. So if you press your arm down, you can lift the chest more and you can feel that shoulder blade action moving down. All right, so now here you want to turn the arm. Turn the arm and here you're turning the whole body like you did in that first twist in forward Virasana. Inhale, lift up, exhale, turn, breathe into it. Just allow that shoulder girdle to turn and the tip of the shoulder to move back. So stay with the breath. Stay with the abdominal breath as well. Inhale, lengthening. Exhale, turning. So you're turning from the back, from the sides, the upper chest. One step at a time and then release. And then finally you can turn your head depending on how your neck is doing. So you're turning and lengthening. As you lengthen, drop that shoulder away from the ear. And then release. Okay, you can do that twice. Second time, I'm moving in a little bit further, and then I'm going to take my hand on either that strap. You can take it on the strap. Actually, that feels a little bit better because I can pull that shoulder down. 
So as I hold that strap, then I start to turn. I bring that shoulder around, bring that elbow around. Keep the knees, thighs in contact with one another and turn. And then turn the neck. Move that left shoulder down, that right shoulder down. And then release. And then other side. Another way you can do it also, if you don't have that strap, is to hold on to the bar. So I have the bar here. Depending on your shoulder mobility already, so you can use that bar holding onto the, the side rail to move that shoulder back. So as you move that shoulder back, the shoulder blade is coming into the body. So stay with your breath. Lifting up through the front chest. You can see I have my arm down here, which is giving me a little bit more of direction and leverage to be able to lift up as well as turn. All right, and then release. Okay, I'm gonna take the shoulder strap off now. And coming out of the chair, come forward, step out carefully. And then I'll just move the chair. All right, now you're going to go to the wall. You're a side body to the wall. Standing in Tadasana, Come up about one arm's length away from the wall. You can start a little bit closer and bring the arm down. So have one hand on your hip and keep that elbow bent, moving the shoulder back, shoulder blade forward and down. So remembering that harness that you had, dropping the shoulders. Take your hand back and press the whole sole of the hand and the fingers into the wall behind you. And from there, press the hand and turn the chest. Turn the chest so that shoulders moving back, you're pressing into the wall. Thighs are moving back, stay on your heels, stay on the front of the foot. And just feel what sensations you feel there. So you may feel some sensation in the wrist, through the palm, and then we'll turn to do the other side. So depending on your shoulder mobility already, you can take the hand down further or you can bring it up a little bit higher, medium height to start with. Press the hand and from there, you're rolling the back ribs, back chest forward so that that shoulder is being drawn back. You walk the hand back further. Press into the fingers, press into the hand and then let that go. And if you can come a little bit higher with straight arm, fingers facing backward, press the whole hand into the wall, adjust your position. Okay, now I want you to lift that elbow up and turn the shoulder. So the inner arm turning, the armpit is lifting up and descending. And then press into the wall. Keep your hand on your hip, elbow moving back. Press, press into any sensation that you feel, lengthening the fingers. And then release. Come to the other side. Turn the hand out. So I brought the hand shoulder height. If you need to take it lower, you take it lower. Hand on the hip. And now I'm lifting that elbow up pressing the heel of the hand and stretching out through the fingers. So what you get there is you get that rotation at the top of the shoulder, shoulder blade moving down, upper arm lifting, armpit chest lifting. And then relief. So releasing, releasing that, feeling any kind of nerve that you might have been feeling, you can just judge what's happening in your arms and your shoulders if you need to do that more. All right, now we're gonna turn around and walk our arms up the wall, okay? So depending on how tight your shoulders are, you may have to have more space. So I'll show a couple different ways. So you're facing the wall, coming close to the wall. Start with your hands on the side here. 
and then just start to walk your hands up. I have my arms a little bit wider to begin with, and then I walk up. And as I walk up, drop the shoulders down. So I'm not walking up like this, lifting the shoulders, but I'm dropping the shoulders. You can use your hands against the wall to do that. Keep the tailbone moving toward the wall. So the buttocks is, at the, is moving toward the wall. And then start to walk your arms up and come up. Keep the shoulders down. Shoulders down, shoulder blades down. Remember, we just had that harness, so you know the direction of the shoulders and the shoulder blade. Keep your head so that you're looking straight ahead, and then walk your arms up. Come down, walk your hands to the side, press the hands, coming close to the, to the wall, lengthen the front of the arms, And now come back, see if you can go a little bit closer. So start to slide your arms up, shoulder blades down, middle buttocks forward. Lift your back ribs, and then as you move your shoulders down, shoulder blades down, start to walk the hands up. Reaching up, press into the heels. Move the buttocks down, lift the back ribs up and walk the arms up and then come back down take your arms behind you interlace your fingers move your arms back as you move your shoulders toward the wall and then bring the hands down okay we're going to do more with that but before we do that we're going to go to the wall first we'll use the ropes if you don't have ropes, you can just, um, you can have a rope tied around a door handle as well. So I'm going to bring my arms into the rope, roll the shoulders back, and then I'll walk forward. All right, so as I do that, I'm letting the shoulder move back. Tips of the shoulders are moving back. Shoulder blades are moving down and forward. And then I want to get a little bit of weight moving forward. So I'm coming onto my toes. Move me, moving my heels back, my thighs back, and at the same time, lifting up. So lifting the bottom ribs up, moving the top of the buttocks down, lift the chest. So when you do this, it's important to keep the muscular action around the shoulder girdle. So not, you're not just pulling the shoulders out of the socket, but you're, you're gripping with the outer shoulder widening through the front chest and keep a firm grip right through the inner arm and the outer arm move your shoulder blades into the body and lift up okay so that's if you have ropes as i said you can have a rope around a door handle um, and walk forward here you can take a strap also and just have the strap so that you can take it behind you and you're going to slide your hands in. Let's have the palms facing one another first. So you're not going to be able to lift. Well, you might be able to do it. You can come to the wall and bend your knees and then move your chest to the wall. Let your chest slide up the wall. Walk your feet away and then extend your arms away from the wall. Lift the front chest, descend the tailbone, and with the palms facing one another, extend from the shoulders right through the fingertips. Okay, here, it's not like the ropes. You're the one pulling the arms back, so you have control, more control. You still have control this way, but here you are not putting the weight, the pressure on it. So now you can also take the hands and face the hands, the fingers down. All right, <clears throat> so it's a different rotation on the arms. So now I've got the fingers facing down. Make sure you have the strap wide enough. So if, you're, if you've got tight shoulders, you might need to have a little bit more width if you're a smaller frame or the shoulders aren't that tight. Just take the fingers and face them down. So with the fingers facing down, standing in Tadasana, feet wide apart, thighs back, top of the buttocks down, middle buttock in, 
shoulder blades into the body, and then just start to extend the arms back behind you. So as you move the arms back, move the shoulders back, extend through, straightening the arms, lift the chest, and just feel that extension through the shoulder. Okay? So now we're going to use the strap again, but we're going to bend forward. Okay? So I'm going to take it a little bit tighter for myself. So I'm bringing my hands into the strap, taking the legs wider, and I come forward. So I'm bending from the hip socket. Keep the chest lifted. Keep the palms facing one another. Lift the arms up. And as I come down further and further, I lift the arms up higher and higher. So it's the same action. The shoulder blades are moving down and the shoulder blades are moving toward the chest. So keeping that as you move forward so that upper back is not rounding, but keep the shoulders lifted. You may only be able to go down this far, no matter how far you go down. See if you can keep that weight, the shoulder blade moving forward chest lifting, and then bring your arms up. Press out into the strap, bring your arms up higher, as high as you can, bring the arms over the head. So for me, this is a little bit too loose. I made it a little bigger so that, to show you if you had tight shoulders, for me, I need it to be a little bit. I want the, the arms, the shoulders and the wrists in line with one another, so that when I press it out into that strap, I also bring firmness to the outer shoulders. And as I do that, shoulders moving in, I can reach the arms up and come over. Okay, I'm going to show this at the wall also, so you have a way to know how far your arms are going over. Okay, now I'm facing the wall. I'm going to take my arms behind me. If you need that strap, you take and hold on to that strap. So I'm walking in, bringing the head down. Just keep your hands on your hips, and then I'm going to walk a little bit closer. And I bring the whole back of the head on the wall, and the shoulders are resting on the wall. So here, when the shoulders are resting on the wall, I can feel that they're not moving toward my head. But I'm using my arms, and I'm lifting them up. So getting that same rotation that you had earlier, lift the arms up. and then start to bring the arms toward the wall, lifting the chest. So here you can feel the back, you can feel the back of the shoulders, you can feel the head, and you can feel the hands lifting and lengthening toward the wall. If that was pretty easy, then you can come down a little bit further away from the wall. Come down in the same way, so you're straightening your legs, you're straightening your arms, and you're not bringing your head to the wall or your shoulders. Your shoulders are moving away from the wall. Crown of the head is moving straight down. Pull with the hands, the fingers, like you were pulling into that strap. And now start to bring the arms over the head, toward the wall, any amount. Press the outer arms towards one another. Keep that back, upper back, moving in toward the chest, and then if that was still easy for you, or as you work on this, you just move with your progression a little bit at a time just to see where you are as you start to get more mobility. And then as I walked a little bit further away from the wall, I have further to go to bring my hands to the wall. Okay, so now I'm touching, firming the arms, standing equally on the feet, moving the thighs back. And then to come out, bring your hands back onto your hips. Inhale, come up. Okay? So now we're going to go into a pose that will be a little bit of traction for the neck. Okay? Viparita Dandasana. So we're going to use the chair. So you can take any kind of chair that you can bring your legs into. Um, I think I'd rather have this mat. 
So I'm going to open the mat out. This is a thin mat. So I'm folding it in half and then in half again. All right, now, depending on your neck, if you have any kind of issue with your neck as well, I'm going to take a bolster here, and I have a blanket here with me in case I need to raise it up. So I'm coming into the chair, Vibrita Dandasana. I'm going to keep the knees bent, walking my hips in so my tailbone is on the chair and my back is on the chair. From here, I'm just hooking the edge of my shoulder blades, pressing my feet, and pressing the hands into the chair. As I do that, I want to make sure that I get the skin of the upper back and the shoulder blades rolling down. So I have to come down a little bit more, using the hands on the chair. So I have a little bit of release here, a little bit of traction for the head, and then if you come down and the head is on that bolster, but you want a little bit more support, you can have a blanket or you can have a pillow. Press the hands, move the shoulders down, and let the back of the head lengthen. Here you can take the hands underneath the chair rail, holding on, widen the collarbones, shoulder blades in, chest lifting. If that's too difficult, if you're wider, you need more space. Just take your hands on the bar. And as you pull that bar, let your outer shoulders move down and feel where that contact is, right below your shoulder blades. So your chest is lifting. And just allow yourself to be there. So here, my neck is lengthening. The shoulders are moving toward my hips. And if you're comfortable there, you can take your hands over and hold the elbows. But keep the lower neck right at the top of the shoulders moving up away from the back of your head. So when you're in this position, you can feel that length coming to the abdominal area, chest lifted. After you're there a little bit, just change the cross on the arms. So all of this needs to be done with your body in mind. How does your body feel? Do you need more support? Do you need more height? Every chair is a little bit different height. Bolsters are different size. So for example, if I wanted more support under my neck, I could roll this blanket and have a little bit more neck support, okay? Then I can feel there that it's on the back of the neck. So depending on your condition, just be willing to try different things until you get the right position where you feel comfortable and you can relax into this position. So now to come up, you always want to make sure going into a pose that you prepare and you observe and you go in carefully, have the props you need. If you don't have enough, it doesn't feel comfortable, come out and take a little bit more support. But when you're coming out also, you want to make sure that you go out of the pose as carefully as you came into it. So press your feet down and then come into that little back arch that we were doing earlier shoulders moving back, and then take your hands on that chair and lift yourself up. Bring your feet back together, knees together, and just do a little bit of a back arch. So here, you want to make sure that the tailbone, the, the top of the buttocks, the lumbar, is moving down. And then you're lifting up. You can walk your hand around. So this is the work we did with the shoulder, moving that shoulder back, shoulder blade into the body. Inhale, lengthening up, so creating that extension through the spinal column, that verticality, and then exhale, turn. And then come back to the center. We'll do the last side. Walk your arm back. So remember, we're opening through that front arm. 
that armpit area. Keep the feet stable, thighs and hips stable, and then inhale, lift up. Take a deep breath in, exhale, turn. So I have the arm on the chair and the other arm is rotating. So you can even take the hand back if you're quite open or your, your shoulder's starting to heal or if it needs a little bit more space, then bring it forward. But still turning, turning. So you're turning from the abdomen, you're turning from the back body, the ribs, and you're turning the chest, okay? You can even take the hand back on the chair rail. So I've got it onto the rail and then I'm able to get a little bit more space in that front shoulder. Okay, and then come out of the chair. You can come out by standing up, lean the chair forward, and then take the foot out. So coming out carefully, just moving the chair. And the last pose that you'll do will go into Secha Bandha, and you can stay in Secha Bandha. I'm gonna bring a couple blocks here. You can do this facing the wall as well, but I'm going to show you this direction. Depending on your bolster, you might need an extra blanket. I'm going to come down onto this bolster and slide my shoulders down. So here, I'm getting that rotation that we've been working on, letting the arms turn out. Start with the knees bent. Make sure that your lower back is lengthened. And these blocks are a little bit too close for me, so I'm gonna come up and move the blocks away. Let's imagine this is your wall. Stretch my legs out. You can take your legs wide or just bring them hips width together. You can also use a strap on your legs. So here we're mostly focusing on the shoulders. So having the legs in the position that feels best for you right now, either bend feet on the floor or extend the legs, and then getting that rotation with the arms, palm facing up. So this blanket, in case the bolster was quite high and you needed a little bit more support or you felt you needed some neck support, you could take the, either the blanket under the shoulders to raise yourself up or roll it and have a little bit of roll to support that neck. Sometimes I see students and the neck is very flat and you want to have a little bit more curve so there's not so much strain on the neck. So you can use that blanket to support the neck, bring the arms out. So arms aren't too wide, but they're coming in a bit so that when you turn the arms out, it's turning the shoulder. If you come too wide, or you come too close, the shoulders come up. So keeping that awareness of the whole arm into the shoulder, into the shoulder girdle, into the front chest. So you're opening that space and then you're completely supported on the floor. Let's take a few breaths there. All right, and then you can bend your knees you can come into Baddha Konasana, the feet on the bolster, and stay a little bit longer. Or you can roll out to your side and just lay down completely flat. You have the bolster there, so you can have the bolster under the knees and adjust yourself. So again, making sure that that, we'll slide these blocks away, making sure that the Head is supported, so if the chin is being thrown back because the shoulders are lifted, make that adjustment. You can take the hands on the side of the mat and walk the hands down, and as you do that, you're pulling the top of the shoulder down. You can even take and unhook the part that's stuck on the mat, walk the arms down, walk the shoulders down, and then just let the arms turn naturally. Okay, I've adjusted the blanket, I've folded the blanket. After you make the adjustment with the shoulders, if the head is still lifting, fold the blanket, bring it higher, bring it all the way to the top of the shoulders, lengthen the neck, and then bring your arms back down. Okay, and then you just be in Shavasana this way, let your arms relax, your legs relax, your arms relax, and then just be there. Okay, so this is a, a short, 
class on just some things that you can do to begin to open the shoulders, open through the chest, bring more awareness into the upper back, shoulder blades, and that space that needs to happen, and the support. So in one way, you're lengthening, and you're opening, and you're stretching. But in another way, you're bringing your muscular action to the shoulders and the shoulder blades and the upper back so that as you press forward, then you can open through the chest. So it works together. It's not just a muscular action. So just find out what you can feel in your body and see how you can best support yourself. You can stay in Shavasana as long as you like. Thank you for joining me. Namaste. Thank you for joining me. I hope you feel a little bit more mobile and strong in your shoulders. Um, just come back to this. I have other classes that also address the same thing. So just tune into the other videos and see where, how you can mix and match different things. Even in our inversions, doing the shoulder stand, all of these help with your shoulder mobility, strength, and your awareness. So enjoy your practice, and thank you for joining. Namaste.